I'm Michael Seffinger, Chair of the Department of Osteopathic Manipulative Medicine here at COMP. Uh, welcome. And I'm sure you have lots of questions about osteopathic manipulation and also what it would be like to come to this school and what would you would learn uh, in terms of osteopathic manipulation. We call it OMM, osteopathic manipulative medicine. So I will use that term, if you don't mind, uh, throughout this uh, short presentation. Our first goal in training students in OMM is to learn how to touch people diagnostically and therapeutically. Certainly we touch each other all the time and our family members, but not usually with the intent to diagnose something and feel and understand perhaps pathology uh, and then come up with a treatment. So we spend the first uh, several weeks in learning how to touch, how to identify uh, all the parts of the body, all the joints, how to feel all the tissues, the uh, musculoskeletal structures, um, the ligaments, the muscles, how to find where the nerves are. Uh, and after you get familiar with the body, then we go ahead and learn how to uh, find dysfunction and treat it. Dysfunction meaning uh, parts of the body that does, don't move well or don't um, function appropriately and learn how to use our hands to improve function and with it improve motion. One of the things that I get asked quite often is what's the difference between osteopathic manipulation and chiropractic manipulation and other types of manipulation and these days you know physical therapists do manipulation, massage therapists, uh, um, natural past manipulation, MDs do manipulation, DOs do manipulation, all these different types of people. How does it differ if you were to do osteopathic manipulation? Well one of the big differences is that first of all you're a physician. As a physician you're responsible to make a diagnosis. You don't just look at somebody's body and see, gee, is there something that doesn't move that I can manipulate and make it move better? It's not that simple. You are obligated to diagnose the problem, uh, find out what really is going on that's making this part of the body not work well or cause pain. Uh, is the blood supply to the area appropriate? Is the lymph drainage or venous drainage appropriate from that area? Is there motion restriction because of muscle tension or ligamental damage? Or is it something wrong with the joint? Or is it something of the internal organs or systemic disease that's causing the problem? Once you make the diagnosis, then you can determine whether manipulation is appropriate. You can apply your manipulation within the context of taking care of that patient as a whole. And that's a, a key part of the osteopathic philosophy. Now, the types of manipulation that you choose to use can be anything from touching lightly to pushing with force or having the patient push back against your counterforce. There's various types of treatments. Sometimes it's just holding a part of the body and not letting it move for a short period of time until it calms down, until the muscles relax and the joints move better by themselves. That, that's one type of treatment. The range of manipulation in osteopathic medicine is quite uh, vast. Uh, in fact, most of what other people do uh, in terms of other practitioners, uh, you will learn a little bit about uh, through our course here. And then you'll choose and select those types of techniques you like and what your patients respond to. And certainly after you graduate, you'll have a chance to learn a lot more as well from other practitioners. People are always developing new types of techniques. You can always learn many, many manipulation techniques to uh, support your particular practice uh, and how you want to practice with your patients. If you want to treat somatic dysfunction that's in the upper thoracic region using muscle energy procedures with the patient in the seated position, you can use the head as a lever. And let's say he has a somatic dysfunction on the left here at T3, okay? And he is extended, rotated, side bent left. Let's say it's a type 2 somatic dysfunction. You can localize your forces at T3 by placing your fingertips on the spinous processes of T2, 3, and 4. Passively flex the head down until it engages the thoracic spine, moving T2, T3, but not T4, and you're there localized at 
T3. Then you can side bend into the restrictive barrier, which is to the right, and rotate to the right using very minimal motion, using the third principle of spinal motion in that motion in one direction decreases the motion in other directions. And so now I have him localized at T3 in the restrictive barrier, which will be his flexion, rotation, side bang to the right. Then I'd have you push against me right here, just with a little bit of force, just meet my force. Right here, push right back into me. I should feel the muscles tighten right here over the transverse process of T3 on the left here. And relax, and they do. Good, now relax. A little more flexion. Side bending and rotation. Push backwards right here. Push backwards, good. And relax. And then I find the new restrictive barrier. Push right here. And relax. And your final stretch, flexion, side bend, rotation, right? And then recheck to see that you have resolved the extended somatis function on the left side here at T3. Uh, we have books that, that are osteopathic textbooks. Uh, chiropractors, physical therapists, massage therapists have their textbooks. And we all read each other's textbooks and learn from each other all the time. So it gets pretty much um, uh, integrative and synergistic. Uh, as you develop as a professional. Another uh, question that I often uh, uh, get asked is, uh, what, what is manipulation good for? What is it used for? And it turns out that um, when an osteopathic physician looks at a person's body and their uh, problems, and you listen to their complaints, you try to figure out, is there something that I can do with my hands mechanically to help them improve in their function? decrease their pain, uh, make them feel better, improve their health. And so the techniques that we have are trying to help the body uh, work better. For instance, if we find problems in the chest cage, doesn't move as well, we try to mobilize and move the chest cage better. Well, when would you do that? Well, if somebody came in with a chest problem like congestion or cough or cold, sometimes with pneumonia, you can help take away some of that tension in the chest from the muscles and the bones by manipulating them and getting them to move better and that will move the fluids out of the chest. People will cough up the phlegm or be able to expectorate is what we, uh, the term we use uh, and they would function better. So we, we look at each situation and see if there's some way that we can enhance the body's ability to heal itself through manipulation. And then if we need to give medicines, we give medicines also. If we need to send the person for surgery or do surgery ourselves, we do that also. So manipulation is used in conjunction with all other therapies that are indicated for that particular problem that you diagnose.